As you could say, okay, so Vaquius, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to speed up your load time with Ableton Live 10. When I first got Live 10 beta, it took a long time to load up, and I just thought that was the beta. Then Live 10 came out, still taking like four or five minutes. It wasn't until I was in a room of other musicians, students of mine, and theirs load up like that, and mine didn't, that I realized, hey, this is a problem. So I went down the rabbit hole of the internet to find different, um, you know, hidden gems to figure out what was going on, and I figured it out. In this video, I'm gonna show you what I did to speed up my load time, and hopefully this will help you out. So let's check out Ableton Live 10. All right, here we are. So if I open up Live, the first thing that'll happen is this option text file. Basically, I changed this in Live 9 to fix some problems I have in Windows. You might also have different option text things that you've added. This is pretty nerdy, but if you've done this, it might come up. I'm gonna show you how to fix this. I hit okay. And then it goes up to the scan VST and takes forever to load. Then once it loads up, everything's fine. It's all good. So I'm just gonna close that and show you what I found out. If I go over to disk drive C, this is on Windows, user, Alki, that's my username, app data, roaming, blah, 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 right? Preferences. In here, I have my option text. And if I double click that, you'll see I have this enable map sibling. I love that thing. It's a thing for another video another time. But I had this absolute mouse mode. I delete that. Click here. Save it. That'll take care of that problem. Second thing is if I go back to Ableton, you'll notice this is under my app data roaming, blah, blah, blah. So within this folder, I have all the beta. I don't know if, I think these are betas or they might've been updates that are happening in the background. Not quite sure. But I found if I deleted these, it would help a lot with this problem. And you'll also notice if I go to nine, live 9.7, I go to my preferences, option text, that one stays there, sweet. So live nine works the way it used to and live 10 works the way it should. That is great, and there's one more thing that I've seen on the great internets, which is people were saying when they updated from eight to nine that they ran into an issue because the MIDI remote scripts that were loading were failing and it was slowing down Ableton's load time. So what I did is I just come in here and rename this to backup, and now Ableton Live won't see this MIDI remote script. You'll see this is under wherever I have Live 10 resources, right? So this is Live 10 slash resources for me, but it's wherever you have your program. Or you could double click, come in here, see what scripts you want, delete scripts you don't want, and so on. I just, as a test, set it to backup. And then let's uh, shrink these guys and load Live 10. And you will see the load time is way faster. We don't get that little window that comes up. It scans the VSTs pretty quickly. And in just a moment, we will be up and running in Ableton Live 10. There you go. If this has helped you out, please comment below. I love to know when my like weird problems and I make a video has helped other people out in the world. So I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. There'll be a lot more videos on Ableton Live 10. I've got tons of videos on Wavetable coming out. Make sure you watch those and subscribe for seeing the future ones. And yeah, more coming at you. Well, let's get back to making music instead of fixing these weird little startup issues, right? So, till next time.